Hi, I'm Bill from Permajet, and today I'm going to be talking to you about the differences between dye and pigment-based ink and printers. If you're looking to invest in an inkjet printer for your photography or artwork, you're likely wondering what the difference is between the two, how these differences might affect the quality of your prints, and what other factors you should consider when you're making the decision to buy a pigment or dye-based printer. So, what's the difference? Dye-based inks, like those in the Canon Pixma Pro 200, are a combination of the carrier, a mixture of water and solvent, and a colorant, which in this case is a liquid dye which is dissolved into the carrier. A well-made dye-based ink should never see separation between the dye and the carrier, no matter how long you leave it. When printing on a dye-based printer, this dye is absorbed into the paper fibres and the carrier simply evaporates. Pigment-based inks, like those in the Canon Pixma Pro 300, are also a combination of carrier and colourant. But in this case, the colourant is pigment particles suspended in the carrier. A well-made pigment-based ink should keep the ink pigment suspended in the carrier for a long period. However, over time, they do tend to settle, which is why we always recommend regular printing to agitate the ink. When printing with these pigment-based inks, the particles bond with the paper fibres and then the carrier still evaporates. So, let's talk about dye-based printers and inks. Dye inks are generally cheaper to produce than pigment ink, so it's likely you will find them in most entry and mid-range photo printers. The hardware, however, tends to be subsidised, so always check the ink cost of dye-based printers to ensure that you're getting the best value. Dye inks will tend to produce images with well-saturated colours, bright, vivid and vibrant. This can be especially effective for colourful portraiture and landscape images. Dye can work well with a range of photo papers, with really the best results coming from high gloss media. As dye-based inks are absorbed into the fibres, this does tend to allow the glossy surface of the paper to shine through. So, some of the drawbacks of dye-based printers and inks. Generally, as they are normally hobbyist and entry level, that means that you'll generally have fewer inks than a pigment-based printer. This means that not only having a reduced colour gamut, the smoothness and the tone of the print can also be impacted. Also, dye-based inks do not offer the same archival qualities that pigment inks can offer. This is due to the water-based nature of a dye ink. It does make them more susceptible to UV light and other naturally occurring elements, and prints, prints will tend to fade and the colours te will tend to degrade much quicker than a pigment ink. Prints from a dye-based printer will come out quicker, but can often be susceptible to the smudging, especially if they're exposed to water as it mixes with the dye. Dye-based inks don't tend to yield as good a result as pigment-based inks when printing on matte papers. The vibrancy of the colour that sings on glossy papers is often not as effective on these surfaces. So, let's talk about pigment inks and printers. Prints with pigment inks are much more resistant to external factors that would degrade a print, such as water and UV rays. They benefit from an incredible print longevity and have the potential to resist fading for up to 200 years when used with the high quality archival paper and stored in the right conditions. Pigment ink printers tend to have more inks in them and offer a wider colour gamut. They often have multiple black and grey cartridges, matte black and photo black, giving better tonal graduation on black and white prints. Pigment ink based printers are often much cheaper to run in the long term as the inks are usually better value for money, especially if you are a mid to high volume printer. So let's consider some of the drawbacks to pigment based printers. Pigment based inks are generally found in the higher end professional level photo printers, which are generally more costly up front. However, the upfront cost of the printer is often offset by the relative cost of the ink. Prints on these printers will look great on all surfaces. However, on certain very high gloss surfaces, the dye-based printers can, in certain circumstances, just per pit them to the post in terms of outright quality. So, in conclusion, 
you can achieve a fantastic result with both dye and pigment based systems. And our recommendation would always be to weigh up the pros and cons of each and make your decision based on your budget, your style of imagery and the regularity with which you print. For archival, long lasting prints, or if you are selling your work, we would always recommend pigment based printers. They offer consistently good images across all surfaces and are often cheaper to run in the long term. Don't forget, whilst the printer costs will be higher up front, the inks are better value for money in the long run. If you are an occasional printer who loves gloss surfaces, then dye based printers do have a lot to offer. They are cheaper to buy often physically smaller and are a great place to start if you are new to printing. Here at Permajet, we are Canon Silver Partners and able to offer their comprehensive range of both pigment and dye based desktop printers. If you'd like to discuss your requirements with us in more detail, please do get in touch and we'd be more than happy to help.